With a project and program management career spanning over 30 years, working for startups to enterprise organisations, there is not much that our next speaker, Duncan Campbell, hasn't experienced. Currently the portfolio manager at Gatwick Airport, Duncan has learned a lot along the way that you won't find in textbooks or methodology or accreditation training. Today, Duncan explains to you all how a program manager really needs to operate and that budgets, plans, status supports and risk logs are perhaps not as important as you might think. Hello everybody uh, and welcome. Uh, today I thought I'd try and offer some insights of being a programme manager. Uh, these insights you will not find in a textbook anywhere. So I have creatively called this little talk, uh, not found in the textbooks, uh, the informal programme manager. I've tried to take a few ideas, collect them into some ramblings for you, um, and then also dotted through the talk, leave you with a few questions to go away and have a think about. So the ramblings are loosely based upon three ideas. Do you really understand the significance of the change that your program is delivering? How much should a program manager really know? And how well should a program manager know his team? It's quite a lot to cram in. I thought I'd throw some stuff out there. Very happy to have a chat online afterwards uh, and hopefully uh, have face-to-face -face chats uh, sometime in the future. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Duncan Campbell. I have been in the project management change delivery arena for the last 30 odd years. I've worked for very large companies and for very small companies and delivered a wide range of projects and programs, both business and technical. I've worked for the lights of the National Grid, Virgin Atlantic, Merrill Lynch. I spent a long time working in the insurance industries for the big players like Allianz and RSA. Uh, and also a significant number of years working for an inshore tech company called Ingeni. I'm currently now working at Gatwick Airport, where I'm the program manager implementing the e-commerce digital platforms. Uh, like many of us, I'm furloughed. This is a word that I did not even know two months ago. Getting used to it, but it is all very weird and very strange. Before starting, uh, a couple of thank yous if I may. Uh, today is all about uh, helping our National Health Frontline employees. So a big call out and a big thank you to them. I do actually have a niece working in one of the London hospitals, so we get a very good and real update of what's going on. When last spoke to her a couple of days ago, she and her colleagues uh, did have enough equipment and were managing to cope and were OK. So that, that's good news. And also a thank you to Steve and his team for initially setting up Silicon Brighton, which I think is a great initiative, and just setting up today. So let's hope it has been well supported. So today, program management, program manager, PM. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean the person who is responsible for leading the change, for deploying something new that will change or impact the way a person or people and or business operates. What I'm not, it's important not here, going to talk about in methodology. This is methodology agnostic. It should cover whether you're working as a waterfall or agile, Kanban, whatever, but that's the last methodology talk uh, sentence of this little talk. Um, what I hope to give you is a few nuggets uh, from my experience, things you won't learn in the formal education of program management. Uh, but I do believe they form an important part of whether your program will be successful or whether it will be seen to be a failure. Uh, I think they're not discussed enough. Uh, and I do think they're important. So this is a great opportunity for somebody like myself, a career program manager, to try and get some of those insights, some of those nuggets across to, to people. The bizarre truth is I do not even have a Prince 2 certification. Please don't tell any future employee that. The thing is that when I started back in the day, you learnt your trade by working for a good project manager or program manager, and you learnt by doing. So understanding the impact and change, it's important to remember that primarily program managers are change agents. Delivering change is by its very definition, changing the status quo, changing the way people do things, changing the way people interact, changing the way people might receive their incentives and their rewards. So you are gonna get some resistance and you need to be ready 
You need to be ready to handle that and you need to be ready to take those people on a journey. You need to get them to understand why this is a good thing. Explain the big picture. These people, and they could be your customers, your program team, doers, sponsors, product owners, business leaders, executives, suppliers, regulators, external bodies, etc. They should, in fact, they must be taken on the whole journey. They must understand why. You cannot suddenly descend on one of those groups and expect them to change and start using that change next week. It doesn't work. Because what you might consider to be a very small change, for example, Paul in Accounts Payable might think is a rather significant change. So my first rambling, take time to listen and gauge reaction. Understand what people's incentives are. Show them how they will gain from this change. Learn from their worries. Get them to be part of the solution. Get them to take some ownership. Make them feel they've had an input. But do not, do not just run off to their boss and moan about them. So, end of first section. A couple of questions, a couple of things to think about. How much time have you taken recently to really understand the significance of the change that you're making to every individual that is being impacted? And the second thought, can you highlight how your approach as a program manager has changed based on the people that you have been working with? So next, let's look at how much a program manager really needs to know. Does the program manager need to be the coach, captain, the player, the back office staff? Does he need to know all the technical? Does he need to know and be part of every decision? Does he need to know every nuance of the business? Well, no, of course he doesn't. And may I suggest that if you have a PM that thinks he does, it might be time for a change. Because no one can be an expert in everything, just not possible. But what a PM should do is make sure that he collates the best cross-skilled team to give him and the programme the best chance of success. So what should a programme manager do? He needs to set the expectations. He needs to set the expected standards. And he does this by creating a framework, by creating an environment for success for his team and each individual member of his team. Programme managers must have energy. They must have drive. They must be able to set a pace. And this must be able to run from, yes, early on a Monday morning, right the way through to, can I go home, please? It's Friday afternoon. He must collate people with the right skills to deliver this programme. And he then must let them and give them the responsibility to deliver. Programme managers must not feel guilty if they're not in every meeting. You should have built your team and built your framework to be able to cope for this. It might be that the team go off to a meeting and then you get a debrief from them afterwards. But you need to have established as the programme manager when you need to de be debriefed and when you trust them to get on with it and to make decisions. As the programme manager, you need to remove the blockers, the descenders, the people who are just a distraction. You need to make sure that you take away those people that need to be engaged. You know the ones that never make it, never take an action and never make a decision, but you have to tip the box. Ah. So my rambling number two, know your own strengths and weaknesses, be consistent, but be adaptive to make sure that you keep your eyes on the big picture and thereby allowing others to work within that framework and succeed. So over many years, one of the things I have learned is that delivering a program is all about people, people, and people. And the real skill of the program manager is to make all those people come together, work for each other, and work for the common goal, the project, program, outcome. Equally, make sure they enjoy their time. Make sure they want to come for work. Make sure there is some banter. Make sure there's a little bit of competitiveness going on around the place. So my rambling number three is, is quite simple. People need to be motivated. Not by having a plan or a status report that shows everything is green, but by having context. 
Give them the freedom to do their best. Give them the freedom to get on with it. As a result of all this, you will get a team that is high performing and wants to go that extra mile. Couple of bits to think about. Could you explain the expectations and the standards that you set for your program? When was the last time you did a 360 degree review of your own strengths? So let us now look at how well a program manager needs to know his team. It's a really, really important relationship. Yes, you need to know how the whole team is operating. Yes, you need to do the big picture stuff, have the big chats, the big kickoffs. But it's really, really important that you understand how the individuals in your team work. What do they want to get from this program? What do they want to get from their work? What are their aspirations? So in order to understand that, some of the questions you might like to ask yourself about them are, what are their triggers? What is motivational for them? What winds them up in a good way and what winds them up in a bad way? How do they react normally? And how does that reaction differ when you're in a stressful moment? Do they have confidence? Will they wait to be led or will they be proactive? Do they need some coaching? If so, in what areas? Who will try things and who will just wait and stall? Do not treat them all the same. They are not the same. Do understand how they operate, what makes them tick. And this will take time. Have one-to-ones, invest in that time. So my fourth rambling, above anything else that you might do as a program manager, understand the people you are working with. Make sure they understand you, make sure you understand them. Make sure their roles are very, very clear. And a big plea from me is never, never, never micromanage anybody. Set the expectations, set the framework, then treat them as experts, and then treat them as adults. When things are going really well, it's important to get them in front of the business people. Don't leave them behind in some dark office down the corridor. This is important because it boosts their confidence, but it also gives the business confidence in the people and in your team. Also, for when times are not going so well, these conversations become much easier because the relationships have been established. It's also very important when things are not going so well that as the program manager, you need to remain calm and the voice of reason, but take your team along because they will have the details and they will be able to explain the options much better than you. So my fifth rambling. As a program manager, never be so arrogant that you think it is only you that can go to the business, to the board meeting. If there are topics to be discussed, take the people who really understand those topics with you. There's a flip side to this though, of course, by allowing your team to grow and to focus on specific areas, they might lose sight of the, the wider picture, what the whole program is trying to deliver. Program management has never allowed this to happen. He must be there to validate and to manage expectations. Also, a program manager must understand what's going on in the wider business. How does his program fit into the, the whole strategy of the company that you're working for? So spend the time talking to people, going out and about internally and externally. So my sixth rambling, or point, and this was a comment that was given to me by a previous sponsor. I could never actually find Duncan, but he does seem to be everywhere. I'd also like to add that what I've just mentioned about the way you treat your team, I think you should treat your suppliers and your partners in the same way. Keeping them at arm's length, being economical with the truth, in my book anyway, does never lead to a good common outcome. A couple of final things to think about. Do you know the personal objectives of each member of your team? When did you last speak to somebody inside or outside the business that's not about your project? So there you have it. A few thoughts, a few nuggets, I hope, that uh, I have learned over the last uh, uh, many years working as a program manager. There are, of course, many more, and I'll be happy to discuss them with you at another time. So for me, being a program manager is not getting bogged down in the books and the videos and the status reports and the raid logs, but it's about being confident in your ability to create and manage expectations, to set and use that framework, to allow other people to grow and to deliver, and then you as a program manager to focus on the people. I recognize at this point, there's probably a number of control freak project managers out there throwing things at the screen. They have their role, but, As you get into more senior change leadership roles, it's much more about the people. 
So my final thought, rounding number seven, if you can get people from different backgrounds, from different cultures, from different approaches, with different incentives, across a range of skills and a range of ages, and get them all to focus onto the common goal of your programme, then you are very, very much on the way to being a trusted programme manager. Just to make sure you're paying attention, what colour jumper was I wearing in the first section and what colour mug was my coffee in? Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day. Stay safe, follow the guidelines, and I look forward to meeting some of you face-to-face -face in the future. Thank you. Goodbye.